And I am joined on stage with um, Ashley Mondragon, a Curie student who's going to help me out with questions for the 14th and 15th Ward sections. Thank you so much to Halu Gutierrez running in the 14th Ward for joining us this evening. 14th Ward includes Archer Heights, Gage Park, Chicago Lawn. I do believe Curie High School is in the 14th Ward, so you've got home field advantage. <laughs> You'll have 90 seconds to answer each question, and then we're going to do a 60-second closing remarks. Reminder to the audience that you've got the green card to wave if you agree with something, red card if you disagree. Please refrain from applauding or booing during. You'll have a chance to do so after. So we'll get started. What plan do you have to improve the safety of residents in Archer Heights and Gage Park at a time of rising crime? First of all, thank you so very much for having me tonight. Uh, for me, it's um, way out of excitement to be here and talk to all of you and also to all of the residents that are watching live. Just for the record, my husband graduated from this school, so even my daughter was so happy to know that I was going to be here tonight. It is important as a mama, too. I'm married, and we have two little ones, a five-year-old and an almost two years old. Safety is a concern in all Chicago. We need to expand the violence prevention programs. We have a lot of community organizations that do great job out there in the streets. We need to have every single person uh, sitting in our tables to make decisions in order to continue to safeguard our communities. We need to have fully uh, funded schools, libraries, and parks. So that way our kids could enjoy and be um, having, sorry, having opportunities to thrive in a safety environment. For example, in Gage Park, we have Senka Park, which does not have a field house, does not have restrooms. Oftentimes, even me being there with my little ones, we need to run to the McDonald's to use a restroom. We really need to improve our spaces so our kids are safe and exercising and having programming, and not only for the kids and youth, but also for the entire community. We need to have programs for every single person in our ward, and also have those spaces shared to other communities. Next question. The former Miami Bowl lot across from the Pulaski Orange Line station has been empty for several years. What would you like to see in that space, and what would you do as aldermen to fill that lot, as well as the other vacant lots across the 14th Ward? So, as I said, we don't have a community space. We don't have a community. Um, so we would love to have that opportunities uh, to build um, spaces like that for Jews in our community, but also uh, for all those other lots. Also, we need to have um, people from their own community planting fruits and vegetables, right, in gardens. So also we can have our little ones start knowing <laughs> how we can grow um, from the... <laughs> so that would be an idea. But also, I want to mention something that we're, we all know. Um, we've never been invited to any community me meetings, any decisions. All the decisions have been taken at closed doors. So I would love to have the input from the community. And of course, I may have plans for vacant lots and spaces in the ward, but I would always invite every single resident to be part of the conversations and have a seat in the table to bring their ideas and to bring whatever they want to see in their ward. Because at the end, we're all neighbors. I'm going to be representing the ward, but you guys are going to tell me what we need. Of course, services, it's a priority, but we need to have you taking decisions alongside me. How would you work with Curie High School, CPS, and the Park District to get the necessary infrastructure fixes to Curie Park? That's a really great question, and thank you so much, Ashley, for asking it. Right now, every single one of us, when we parked, we were able to look at the park, right? Kids deserve those spaces, as we said. Youth deserve those spaces. We need to build, and the budget and the money is there, and also I want to say that we can work with other levels of governments. Even I see here seeing one of the state representatives. And I also uh, could talk to Erin uh, Ortiz, a representative, Edgar Gonzalez here, present, Senator Selena Villanueva, Senator Javier Loera Cervantes, who's helping um, our campaign. And we can bring that money home, right? The budget is there. We just need someone that really is going to 
have the heart in the community, and it's going to allocate it properly and equally to all the ward. And of course, you, Curie students, will be part of these discussions because also they might be professionals that would like to say this is the best for Curie, but what if you don't like it or what if you don't need it, right? You guys need to be part of those conversations as well. In the Archer Heights neighborhood, we have a lot of cars that zoom down the streets. These vehicles are always nearly hitting children on bicycles and senior citizens. How do you keep residents safe? We are all part of a family, right? We all have kids, we all have adults and seniors at home. So we all have to advocate together to have safe streets. Uh, I would love to have a campaign. I'm a former educator. I would love to have a campaign with you guys and some other schools, you know, promoting how we need to not speed and what's the limit of, of, um, that we need to be driving at. So I would love to have different ways of approaching this, not um, including as many people as we can, and of course kids and youth. I don't know, making commercials, having a, um, a, um, a drawing contest, like different things, right? Um, out there so promoting safety in the streets and the communities uh, with another lens, not always, because we've done so much before that maybe have this hasn't worked, so we just need, impro need to improve new ways to look at these problems and find solutions. And we've got a question from our audience. What actions would you take to include more youth voices in your decision-making process in the 14th Ward? As I said, as a former educator, I used to work at Hernandez Middle School, and it's been amazing to knock on so many doors and encouraging my former students. It's something that I've done for some years, organizing and being involved in many initiatives with kids and youth. So I would love them to be part of this and for them to feel uh, how important it is to be involved, right? A lot of youth is like, uh, why should I vote or why should I care, right? So they need to lead those efforts to always bring their friends and families to understand what is the importance of being involved in the community. And I think I could uh, do a good job about that because it's something that I've been working on for some time. Thank you. And our next question, how would you plan to ensure that all the constituents of the 14th Ward are being represented, especially when there may be different priorities and interests given the different neighborhoods across the 14th Ward? Thank you so much for that question. Actually, that's why it's a motto for me running, right? Because oftentimes we've seen the differences between the different own communities in the 14th Ward, right? We don't see the same clean, areas or streets, paved, sidewalks, um, trees trimmed, and lights um, fixed or remodeled, right? Uh, we can see the difference between some of the communities, and we just need to ensure that all the services are equally distributed, that everybody have the same, um, all the, the different communities just need to have the same things, right? For me, when they say, oh, because you're Latina, you're going to only serve Latinos, or you're only going to serve this community, is no. We can, my government, my office will be always at the open door policy, which we're going to be helping everyone. Every single person with a case, every single person that comes to our office will be um, welcome with a smile, will be helped. If it's city, if it's county, whatever it is, we can always tell them where to go, because many of the constituents already went across the whole city looking for an answer. So when they come to our door, it's our last opportunity to serve and treat them right how they deserve. So that's going to be my platform. Thank you. As city council member, how would you address food insecurity in your neighborhoods? As you may know, I've been the district director with Commissioner Anaya for a couple of years. And because of the pandemic, we had to switch our initiatives and our events in the community, and we had to take care of all those needs in our war in our district back then, in 7th District. And I was the lead of a lot of the food distribution efforts in the district. We were hosting one food pantry a week, every Wednesday, at uh, Chicago Loan. And then we signed a contract with the Chicago uh, Food Depository to have a uh, Food um, distribution every month, so I would love I would love to have to continue to host one with my office and my staff, but also why not create I don't know if you've seen the one that it's in 63rd with Iman or the one the New Life created that it's um, a, it's um, just a space where people could come and get their food for free right it's so we can make maybe have something like that in our ward 
So everybody, and not only 14 Ward, but all of the Southwest side could come and also get food from there. How would you work with other Southwest side city council members to address issues that affect our region as a whole? We may live in the 14 Ward, but we may work in the 12, or my, uh, our kids will go to school and maybe in some uh, other place. We have other family and friends that live in some other areas. And what I would love to do is always collaborate with every single um, colleague in city council um, here in the southwest side, but also take a peek of what's working in, in the north side, for example, right? And if it's something that we see that it's working over there, implement it over here. And vice versa, if we're doing something good that it's working here, hopefully they can also work it over there, right? It's always about unity, collaboration, and working together. Thank you. And our last question, will you commit to having regular town hall and community meetings if you were elected alderwoman? Of course, as I mentioned it, um, we've never been invited to any community meeting in the ward. So that's going to be my one of my priorities to always have you guys um, listening in, um, to what we're proposing, but also listening to your con concerns, always having ward nights, but also um, I've been always thinking that we should open the office um, one Saturday, minimum one Saturday a month because a lot of constituents work Monday through Friday and they're not going to be able to take off from work to come and, and talk to us. So be as available as we can. Also, if we need to go to a senior or to a, a disabled person that is not able to come in, we would always go to them but always host these type of events, workshops and events where everybody is included and welcomed. So we'll now have a 60 second closing remark to round out the section. Thank you so much. So again, my name is Helu Gutierrez. Um, I was born and raised in Guadalajara, Mexico. I uh, came to Chicago uh, 12 years ago. And even though the weather, it's unpredictable, <laughs> I love every single thing here in Chicago. And I will humbly ask every single one of you to consider me as your other woman. Um, I need you in, in, in the table to take those decisions. We need to work hard with our stakeholders and bring professionals in the area. We also know mental health, it's a priority. And there's talent in our ward. We also need to have those spaces for them to work and provide those services, bilingual services. Y con eso quiero terminar, que agradezco a todos para los que hablen español, que tenemos que ser inclusivos, tenemos que seguir trabajando juntos, merecemos una persona que tenga su corazón en la comunidad, que esté dispuesta a trabajar de lunes a domingo y que tenga iniciativas para todos los residentes, que incluya todos los puntos de vista, todos los lenguajes, que trabaje duro, que provee los servicios, que no ponga excusas y que siempre haga lo mejor que pueda para ayudar y servir a su gente. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again, Ms. Gutierrez, for being here and for answering questions. And again, to the audience for submitting such great questions, you can now applause if you would like.